guys, John Faulkner here with me always, Chris Weatherman. And uh, today, you know, in our podcast here, we wanted to talk uh, a little bit about rules on bartering. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we talked about items for bartering, mm -hmm. things like that, our top 10 list of things that we like to barter with. Yep. Uh, this is kind of a follow-up to that, you know, because it's not just about the items. No, there's a lot of rules that, that go into this. A lot of things you need to consider anyway. Right. I mean, at least considerations if we don't want to call them rules. Yeah. There's a lot you need to be thinking about because it can be a dangerous time. Yeah. So. And, you know, and these rules are based on bartering in a situation uh, like a WROL situation, yep. a long-term survival situation. Uh, but a lot of them also stem from what we've gone through in life already. Yeah. Buying a used car, playing oh. poker. Going to the flea market. Going to the flea know? market. Things, uh, things like that. that yeah. Bartering is not much different than no. as long as you follow some of these rules. Yep. And if you don't, that's where issues can come about because of the situation that you now find yourself yeah. in. Yeah, like you're talking about when you're gambling, playing cards or something, there's tells. Well, yeah. bartering can have tells too. Right. The only problem is with bartering in a WRL situation, you may not just lose your money. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. So, so that's why Chris and I came up, we came up with 10 rules uh, for bartering and uh, you know, it's fun. I, Chris and I, uh, we take a lot of long road trips together. Yeah. And uh, and this is the kind of stuff that we we usually start r snowballing on, and conversations just roll. And... This is the stuff we'll say in public that comes yeah. out. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, all right. Rule number one: uh, Do not trade at your location. Exactly. Whether that's your house or your bug out location or, or whatever, if you're laying your head there at night. Yeah. It's not a place you want to be inviting people to come make trades because um, you're inviting unknowns in, yeah. which we'll get to that in a little while too. But um, find a find a, a third-party location, mutual neutral ground, someplace where you both can go meet, um, and then don't do it at home. Yeah, and, and I will say, um, you know, a lot of these rules also have to go with uh, trying to keep the tension levels yes. down as much as possible. And... If somebody is coming onto your property, if they're walking through gates, if they're seeing other people, mm -hmm. their anxiety starts to rise. Well, and two, so. everything they see is intel that they're gathering. Right. If they can exactly. get a count That's on the people, if they can get a count on positions, weapons, dis, uh, you know. Um, the disposition of everything that you have, yeah. that's really bad news. You don't want to be doing that either. Yeah. And a neutral location evens all of that out. Yeah. Um, you're not walking into their place. Yep. They're not walking into your place. So n rule number one, do not trade at your location. Find a neutral location in order to, to do your, your bartering at. Yep. Uh, number two, do not show all you have. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to be meeting some of the barter, you know, number one, I would say do not take more with you on a barter trip then you're willing to lose yeah and by lose i mean as in get nothing in return for um so take the minimum amount you think you're going to need yeah you know and and make it look a little desperate this is all man this is all i have this is yeah. all i got um because if they know you have more they're going to come looking for it what, what i like to do uh and it's the same thing even put this back into everyday life uh whenever i travel uh whatever cash i have on me I distribute it between my backpack, yeah. a couple of pockets, my wallet, so so that if for any reason I was approached by mm -hmm. somebody that had a firearm or something, hey, I can reach into my front pocket and say, here, dude, that's all the cash I got. Yep. And usually they'll just leave, you yeah. know. But if you have, if you just pull out, you know, hey, I got a thousand bucks with me and it's all in my front pocket, it's yep. like, uh, do you mind if I give you 200? <laughs> Will 200 make you go? No, they're taking everything. Yeah. And when it comes to like a barter situation, you can do the same with, hey, you might have some medicine, ammo, liquor, anything like that. Cigarettes, but, whatever. But you can have it distributed in your pockets and in your backpack in different locations to where you can start with, I got four of these. Yeah. Chris, I have four and that's it. And if Chris is really shrugging his shoulders and, you know, pulling on his, on his beard, I might be able to say, you know, I, I might have one more in my backpack. Would that sweeten the deal? But if I open my backpack and Chris sees 10 bottles yeah. of Jack, Chris's new number is now 10. <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah. You know, so where if you, if you break these apart a little bit, stash them in different locations, it gives you a little bit of the upper hand by not showing everything yeah. that you have. Well, I have a little variety with you too, because right. like you said, where 
four bottles, four mini bottles of Jack might not have done it for him, but then a pack of marbles thrown on top. Hey, okay, that might have just done yeah. it for him, you know. Or whatever it is, you know, we could be talking food and diapers depending on the situation mm -hmm. of the people. Exactly. But, you know, have a little bit of variety with you just in case, too. Yeah. So. But, yeah, like you said, definitely don't just fill a backpack full of crap and walk up And just there. open it on the ground and be like, yeah. let me see what I got in What's here. What's Santa got in his you bag know? today? Uh, <laughs> so, so, number two, do not show all that you have. Yeah. Uh, number three. Do not go alone. Absolutely don't go alone. Um, and we've got a couple other security things that come up later, but um, if you're alone, you don't know if they brought other people. Yep. And you're much safer to assume they will. Ideally for myself, I would go with one person who's going to be standing beside, behind me, whoever's conducting the trade, pulling security, and then even a third overwatch someplace mm -hmm. else, probably with a scoped rifle watching everybody, and assuming at the same time they're doing the same thing. Yeah. So... Because everybody's going to be nervous, you know, and until you build some relationships, and, and even then, you've got to be careful with those, because yeah. as they progress, you can be lulled into a sense of comfort and complacency, and it can end badly. But, yeah, you need to have security. Yeah. And, you know, and when you're, when you're going alone, uh, your eyes can usually only be focused in one, one direction. direction. You know, and, i got a and, friend that can do both. <laughs> we all have one of those <laughs> friends. <laughs> you got to, like, yeah. Back over here. Look at me with a good eye. Over here. Uh, um, but, you know, when you go alone, there are going to be times where you have to look down. Oh, yeah. When you have to examine something. Uh, when you're going to kneel down and dig into that backpack. Right. You know, you know uh, and, and that's usually where you, you find a club over the back of the head or something. Yeah. If, it, if that's what their intention was coming to this yeah. the entire time. Um, so definitely, you know, going alone. Uh, it is not a, a good idea. No. And I think it's always easier also to, if a situation ever gets uh, heated, I believe it's usually easier for two people. If, the, if, if, if me and Bob are getting heated over a trade that we can't make, if Chris has no valuable interest in our trade, Chris is always there to try to cool things down. When it's just one on one, oh, yeah. that's usually where it gets heated, yep. and it doesn't stop. It just escalates, escalates to a yeah. point, you know. So, so a third person can always help neutralize a heated situation, yeah. I believe. Um, and it will keep them potentially from acting rash, because right. yeah, I might be able to kill him, but his buddy's going to kill me. My buddy might then kill that guy, but the bunch of us are dead. Yeah. So, so, so number three, do not go alone. Yeah. Uh, number four, go early. Yeah, back to what I said a minute ago about we're gonna have some more security points in here. Um, I would go early to put eyes on the meeting place. Yep. Um, you know, a couple of hours early even, just to see, do they do the same thing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, or, or are they moving guys into the tree line? Or do 15 people show up and start hiding around the place you're going to... You know, these are all things you would like to know. Yeah. And, and in this world, it's just some of your time, and, you know, your time is uh, worth way more at keeping you alive than it is spent doing anything else. So yeah. it's a pretty good investment. And, and, you know, and the going early thing, just like Chris said... It, I think it negates a lot of traps that you could potentially oh, yeah. walk into. Um, so, you know, never never be late either because being late also just starts people Makes upset. them nervous. And it makes start, them nervous. starts making them nervous. They think they've been set up for something. Right. And then when you finally do show up, you're already working at a, um, at at a, a deficit. deficit. Yeah. Yep. You're already starting below par. Yeah. So. If you start every negotiation with, I'm sorry, I'm late. Yeah. You're already starting yeah. on the downside. And, you know, that works in real life today, too. It's true. I mean, I'm just saying. It's true. Sorry I was late. Uh, yeah, you're always <laughs> late. Um, okay, so number four is go early. Uh, number five, do not trade out of desperation. Yeah, and that's that's a hard one because, you know. Sometimes the, it's unavoidable. By the nature of bartering, you're trying to get something that you don't have. Yeah. And the nature of that thing will obviously scale desperation accordingly. You know, if you've got a child at home who's got a raging fever and is very ill, you really want some antibiotics or yeah. maybe some Imodium or whatever that's going to help them. You know, you really want that. So you're going to be a little desperate, but you need to you need to try to hide that desperation, tone it down, because obviously the more desperate you seem, the more expensive whatever it is you're after is going to get. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you want to scale that down a little bit and, you know, and plan ahead so you don't get into those desperate moments. That's where you play the nonchalant, like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. I don't really need it that bad. Yeah. I mean, I just, like, came, like, five miles. Yeah, to, I just, you know, just see. I just walked five yeah. miles in the 90-degree heat this afternoon just to see. Just to see. If you had some um, antibiotics. But, you, you know, when, when I, I honestly believe that most Americans are good-hearted people and, and will help in situations 
I believe the but opposite. But it's usually just not the case. I believe the opposite. It's usually just not the case. And most of the time when people see desperation, uh, they they smell the blood in the water. And and it can, it can make trades that much harder yeah. for you. We want to believe that people are inherently good. Yeah. I come out early saying I don't believe people are inherently good. People are base animals, and depending on the pressure they're put under, they'll act accordingly. Hurricane Michael just passed. Prime example, the looting is rampant up there. Yeah. The, the police up there, was it Panama City, yeah. shot a guy already? Yeah. Um, and there were, I read an account of a guy that was in a shelter. The storm ripped the doors open on the shelter, and nobody moved to close them except him and a couple of the guys ran up to do it. And then people were complaining that they closed the doors when all this debris was being blown. Because now there's no breeze, and it's stuffy in here. Yeah. So people, and, and everybody responds differently to those stresses. Right. So, you know, the desperation level can affect everybody differently, and, and that's the wild card you can't account for. Yeah. So. So, so number five, uh, don't trade out of desperation. Yeah. Uh, number six, try to establish trade lines. Yeah, you know, you don't want to, like I said earlier, you don't want to be the guy in the neighborhood that when the neighbors all get around and talk, and they all suddenly realize that everybody there has traded you for something. Yeah. Now you start looking like the guy that has everything. You know, if you can trade outside your immediate area with known entities, you start building those relationships. Yeah. Like we said, you have to be careful of becoming complacent, but at least you're broadening your scope of people to trade with, potential items to come by. And also these barter opportunities are, are um, or these barter meetings are opportunities to collect intelligence. Hey, John, what have you heard? Yeah. You know, what's going on with you? What's going on here? Um, again, the nature of things, you've got to be, be aware of disinformation and the like, but it broadens your horizon and, and your right. knowledge of what's happening around you. Yeah, so. and I mean, trade lines is something that America was really based on yeah. and founded on because the, the geographical differences of north and south, you know, uh, I mean, it used to be, you know, northerners trading with southerners yep. because they can't get what we can and we can't get what yeah, they, they can. Yeah, they couldn't grow cotton in Massachusetts, but you, you know? could grow it in South Carolina. Right. You know? And so, you know, it's something that is, is I think, starting to evaporate yep. in America nowadays because we just all go to one trade well, line and, and that's the Internet. Ju yeah, just in time inventory does it too. You know, you go right. to the grocery store or Walmart or Target. I mean, the list of places that people shop on a daily basis can probably be counted on one hand yeah. as a whole nationwide. And like you said, Amazon is really the, the gorilla in the room as far yeah. as most of that nowadays. So, so, you know, I mean, establishing trade lines with different people, um, you also start to build the, like you said, the familiarity with yeah. people, uh, a comfort with people. Um, and two, if, if you need something that you can't find, now you're, instead of you out looking for it, you can yeah. put that bug in the, in the ear of five, six, seven other people. Hey, I'm looking for some of this. They may not have it, but now they're asking five, six, seven other people, and right. you know it might find its way to you. So yeah. it's a good, another good reason to establish this. Yeah, and 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 I believe that you know trade lines are are like a spider web. Yep, they just keep expanding out. It's uh, the greatest pyramid scheme. Truly is. So uh, so yeah. So number uh, six is is uh, establish trade lines. Number seven, uh, have a barter inventory. Yeah, you want an inventory of goods to trade that is outside of your daily needs consumptions, yep. you know, because if you're trading the stuff that you need to eat or drink today or tomorrow, now you're trading on a desperation. We right. just talked about that. So, and two, you're, you can keep some of those weird things in there that, you know, you're not going to sit around and get drunk all day, every day. I mean, at least I hope you're not. You might for a little while, but that'll get old. Um, but having alcohol, tobacco, coffee, coffee, sugar, tea, yep. hygiene products, soap, you know, toothpaste, toothbrushes, all that kind pretty of stuff. Pretty much our whole top 10 barter items. Yeah, list. pretty much our top 10 barter items, matches, Bic lighters, you know, all that stuff that you can trade. And too, you know, a lot of these things, if, you, if you've got a fifth of Jack Daniels, don't take that fifth to go trade it. Pour it off into something, yeah. you know, get some smaller containers, pour it off. You know, anybody can crack that lid and be like, yep, that's Jack. So, you know, same with like matches, break them out of that 500 count box and put them in smaller quantities, take them out and trade them. But have stuff dedicated to Yeah, them. and the other part of your barter inventory is make sure that it hits a lot of broad yes. topic areas, yep. categories, you know. Uh, listen, you might have a 55 gallon drum of nine millimeter ammo. Yeah. <laughs> but if you go to Chris and you're like, hey, I got nine millimeter, he's like, I don't need any nine millimeter. You're yeah. like. I shoot a 45, I don't need nine millimeter. But I got nine mil ammo. You're like, I. Don't need, and if that was your entire barter system was nine mil ammo because you thought everybody's going to need it. Everybody's going to need it. Yeah. Uh, you want to be able to have it broad where 
I can go to Chris and say, what are you looking yeah. for? Or I well, can just listen to Chris yeah. talk and go, well, I got some of that. Yeah, you don't, need, all right, you don't need 9mm nine, nine ammo. What else do you need? Yeah. You know, well, I'm looking for some fish hooks. Oh, okay. And, yeah. and so, you know, having broad categories that base around uh, food, water, hygiene, clothing, um, ammunition, weaponry, like tools, we talked about, yeah. tools, uh, you know, things like that. Seeds. The, the, bright, the broader you can make it, the more appealing mm -hmm. you are potentially to somebody else. Uh, you don't want to become the, the one trick pony where it's like everybody knows all you have is ammunition, that's yeah. it, because they're not going to come to you for anything in a bartering situation. No. And it, uh, too, it, it will decrease dramatically the value of your 55 gallon yeah. drum and nine millimeter yeah. ammo. You'll find yourself trading off thousands of rounds for things that yeah. you could get much better deals on if you had, say, a big lighter, if that's really what someone wanted. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, so number seven, have a barter inventory. Uh, number eight, never go straight back home. This goes back to our security, you know. So we said go early um, so you can put eyes on, potentially establish some overwatch security. Um, at, as a barter's wrapping up, I would even go so far as to say have hand signals so that your overwatch would know you're wrapping up. They can then go set up on your, your exfil route so that when you leave, you walk past them, and if bad guys or the other guys are trying to follow you, they'll know about it. Yeah. Um, you know, and don't take the same route home that you took in. You yep. know, you got to vary these things, um, and you may even want to do a Double whole back. 100, 360 yep. degree circle back on them to see if you're being followed. And it sounds, you know, like like paranoid um, or tough guy stuff, but you know, in, in a in the, a world without rule of law, these are legit things you need to be considering. Yeah, because um, there are no second chances, and you, you know, it's, it's like the old saying goes: you know, treat everybody you meet politely, but have a plan, a place to kill them. You know, and it's just the way we're gonna have to live yeah. if this occurs. And you know, and it's one of those things where uh, you're trying to give the smallest portion away as possible. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the rule of barter. And without letting on how much you really how have. much you really have. Yeah. And if people start to notice. This guy's got quite a bit of stuff. Every always time we has. talk to him, and he's got different yeah, stuff. Yeah, and he's always got something else. He always has just the right thing. Right. You know, they're they're going to start to pick up on that. Yeah. And and the, I think one thing that's really overlooked is a lot of people think that a lot of people are real stupid. No. Like we think a lot of criminals are real stupid. Yeah. They're they're really not. You know. Yeah. And you have to make sure that because this takes. Um, not only your safety into consideration, takes your family's safety into consideration. Um, it, yeah, that, that well-crafted home that, that you were you're able to, to stay in after things collapsed. Yeah. You know, you bugged in because you're well-supplied, you're well-set up, and it was going great. You could very well find it under siege, you know. Yeah. And to the bad guys, they'll be just as likely to burn it to the ground to, to deny you having it. As they are to walk away and I would leave agree with, with that. it. Yeah, so. I would. I would definitely agree with that. So you know, number eight, make it simple. I mean, you know, never go straight back home. Yeah. Double back if you got to, and do things like that. Uh, number nine, never push your luck. Right back to the poker table. Yeah, right. Yeah, we were talking about the poker table earlier, and, and this is a good point because you know, I, back when I used to day trade stocks, we had a saying, and it was, "Pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered." And the greedier you are, the more risk you run, and that goes with everything in life. So. You know, if you're making a trade and, and the other guy is starting to put up a little resistance, like you're asking, you keep asking for more and more, you know, eventually you, you may blow the trade altogether yep. or you may even offend somebody. And, and in that world, offending somebody has far different connotations than it does in our polite, civilized world. Yeah. So, yeah, don't push somebody too far. Yeah. And, and don't I'm, take advantage of them. Yeah. And, and I think that the, the, the biggest thing with pushing your luck is, you know, going back to poker, it's, it's pushing your chips all the way in. Yeah. You know, right after the flop. I mean, just trying to, to push people over the edge. Yeah. Uh, because Somebody will call your bluff. People will call your bluff. And also, you are, remember, we're trying to establish trade lines here. And if somebody feels like they're always getting bullied almost, mm -hmm. getting pushed, you know, in a direction they don't really want to go, they're either going to stop or they're going to push back. Right. And usually when somebody pushes back, that's when they call your all in, yeah. and they have more chips than yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah, and you find out they got that flush that, that you don't right. have. You know, and and so, you know, the one thing about bartering is we always want to feel like we walk away winning. That's that's the yeah. biggest thing, you know, uh, to where if you feel like you have to keep pushing it in order to have that feeling, 
it's mm -hmm. going to bite you in the butt sooner well, and two, you can you can begin to alienate those you're bartering with. Yeah. People will just stop. No, I'm not trading you no more. You're an asshole. I'm, you, I'm not trading with you no more. Yeah. Uh, and you don't want to do that. And two, the community will be talking. You don't want to go trade with that guy, man. Yeah. He really took advantage of me, and I needed it, but he took advantage of me. So, you know, like John said, we want to come out feeling like we win, but both sides can win in these yep. deals. Yep. You get what you needed. I get what I needed. Yeah. You Until know? next time. Until next time, yeah. So... There's nothing wrong with that at all. So that's number nine, never push your luck. Number 10, do not trade with strangers. Yeah, I would avoid the, the new guy that just pops up on the block and is interested in starting to barter because he's an unknown en entity. You don't know anything about him. You don't even know where this guy li lives or, or anything like that. And, and just so you know, we're considering strangers like, hey, I've lived in this house for 10, 15 years, and I've never seen this guy before. And all of a yeah. sudden, he's walking down the street wondering if I have something to trade. Yeah. We all have that neighbor that we're like, hey, yeah, he's lived there 10 years. I don't, don't even, even know his name. name. Yep. You know, that's not really a stranger. No. You know, you might have to go up and be like, I've lived next to you for 10 years. Yeah. I don't know your name. I'm John. Yeah. But we, we wave at each other every day on the road, but yeah. I don't know who the hell you yeah. are. So. Yeah. I always wave at you like you're mowing your yard really good, even though you're like, Dude, those lines are way <laughs> all the way. Uh, but, you know, it's one of those things where trading with people that just pop up they might just be trying to gather intel, like you said. Well, especially past. if someone was to be out there rapping on the gate and calling for attention, and, hey, we want to trade, you know, that's a super dangerous situation because now you're violating um, the first Number one. rule that we laid out is don't yeah. trade in your area, um, and you're trading with a stranger now. Now you're starting to stack the deck against yourself. So, yeah. you know, yeah. it's better to go with known entities. And, and it's once again, you know, it's trying to it, – it, it, I think this rule number one or number ten, trading with strangers, it really falls in line with a couple other ones, you know, um, because you just don't know where these people are. You don't know if they're trading out of desperation. You don't know, um, you know, where they come from, who they are. Or if they're are. just out conducting a recon. Exactly, yeah. you know. Um, so, so there's a lot of things that you could fall into a trap just because, you know, you felt like you needed to when right. you really don't well, and that's if, as long as you follow the rules yeah. so um so number 10 guys don't try to trade with strangers yeah. so those are our top 10 rules um that we you know kind of came up with with regards to bartering um if you think you had any other rules that need to be added to the list feel free to comment below make sure you like the video um, if you got any other questions or comments with regards to barter bartering Leave them below as well, and I hope you guys enjoyed this. Have a great one. Till next time.